The other day, I was looking at some of my old mocks from like a year or two ago, and I was thinking that I was pretty bad back then. I wasn't very good at all. So I did a deep dive and really thought about what made me improve, how I improved, and what made my mocks go from basically crap to something that I'm actually proud of. And after looking at a whole bunch of different stuff, I've basically boiled it down to seven different kinds of pieces that I used a whole lot more and in much more intricate ways that you can also use that will pretty much take your mock from zero to hero pretty quickly. I like saying that. Now the reason I chose these seven pieces is because they all accomplish one thing, and that's building outside of the system. So as you know, LEGO builds in a grid style pattern where it's all square and blocky and you can only go from stud to stud, but there are pieces that let you break that rule and give you intricate angles and allow you to move pieces in certain ways that you cannot do by just building in the system. So you'll see that almost all of these pieces break that rule and they allow you to get some intricate angles and some pretty cool shapes. Now I also made a small mock using almost every single one of these pieces just to show you that they can all be blended together and used in pretty much any single mock. So the first piece I want to mention is actually my favorite and that's because I've been using it for around the past three to four months and it's my favorite because it allows you to get a very wide range of motion and this is the Mixel ball joint. These pieces are probably the most versatile of pieces that are not not only stable, but they allow you to move pieces outside of the system. And I say they're the most useful because you have a very wide array of motion. So basically, you can twist these pieces in almost 360 degrees, so you have pieces that are angled in ways that you could not have angled them with, say, a hinge plate or just a snot brick or anything like that. They're very, very useful, and there's nothing really like them. I tend to use these things for terrain because it really adds a different kind of shape to the rock work and the grass and whatever you're using it for. I used it in my Harry Potter Owlry, I used it in my Sphere station, but I also used it for a roof in my Diagon Alley mock, and that's because I wanted some sort of angle that looked like it wasn't actually connected, but it was, so it's perfectly legal, and LEGO could sell it as a set if they wanted. Now in this mock I've created for this video here, I used it in the rock work on the far right hand side, that way you have some extra shapes, because you don't want it all to look like the rock is built into the LEGO system. The Mixel ball joints break that technique, and if you look over there you're like, well, that looks kind of cool. It's a pretty easy technique to capture, and I think you'll really, really enjoy using it. The second piece is probably one that everybody uses. It's pretty simplistic, but I love it all the same. And this is the snot brick. Snot stands for studs not on top. That way you can build sideways or upside down or something like that. And the reason I love these pieces is because they can be comboed with pretty much every single other piece. So you might look at this and say, well, Jack, if you use a snot brick, you're technically still building inside of the system. And that's correct. But using a snot brick with a mixel joint, for example, allows you to have certain angles and certain shapes where you can see a snot brick and studs going in different directions, all while being angled 360 degrees or less, if that makes sense. That was a big jumble of words. I use this most often in my rock work. You can see here in this mock I created, it's used for the borderline of the rock work, but I also use it just for normal detailing. It's here in my Diagon Alley mock again. Pretty much every single mock I use the snot brick is present. Now one of my favorite techniques that I've ever used, and this one I only started using with my Diagon Alley mock, is the net technique. And the cool thing about the net is that it's extremely, extremely flexible. It's also the same size as a Lego stud base plate, if that makes sense. So every single little square you see aligns with a stud in the Lego base plate system. And if you attach bricks to this, what happens is you're able to flex these bricks in multiple different ways. I used this in my Diagon Alley in the cobblestone pathway. That way the path looked a little bit more curved and a little bit more natural. Now this technique can also be applied to terrain, as you can see here in this mock. I used a bunch of sand green plates, attached those to the net with some studs and some pink bricks, and I just flexed them up so it looked like a sloping hill, which is not something you can do with the normal LEGO system. It's pretty tedious work to actually sit down, grab a brick, put the net on top, put studs on top, and then put a plate on top, but once you do it, it's definitely worth all the time you put into it. This one is definitely one of my favorites, and it's definitely gonna give you some shapes that you would not have had had you not known about it. Now these next two bricks, I'm kind of gonna put together. It's the hinge plate and the hinge brick. So both of these bricks allow you to actually angle certain pieces in ways that you cannot do in the system. For example, they work like snot bricks, but you can also angle them upwards, say 45 degrees, or pretty much anywhere from 90 degrees to zero degrees. They're great for terrain if you want portions of a rock to face upwards or something like that, and the hinge plates are actually great if you want some rock work or pretty much any portion of a building to be angled out and not be 180 degrees or parallel with another piece. Going back to my Diagon Alley mock, you can see I used this to make the orange building slope forward, and I also used it on a lot of the roofs 
to make them actually sloping downwards. It's extremely versatile and both these pieces can be used pretty much anywhere. Terrain and buildings is where I use them the most, but I'm pretty sure if you built a car or something like that, you can angle a windshield forward or backwards or whatever you build in cars. So definitely start experimenting with this just because it's going to give you some super cool angles. This next technique is one that I don't use a whole lot, but I think it's definitely a super advanced technique and I think a lot of people don't use it just because it's very, very hard to use. These small tire treads actually have a function where you can attach some plates or some tiles or whatever you want, maybe even a brick to the side. And then you can rotate these pieces and kind of bend them forward or bend them backwards to actually make some pretty cool slopes and some pretty cool shapes. In this mock, you can see this water tower uses this technique to make a round shape, which is something that is very, very hard to do with pieces uh, in a certain size. So for example, there's headlight bricks that have studs everywhere, like on all four sides and then the top, and you can use multiple of those to make a circle. But the cool thing about these tire treads is that you can make a circle or a slope of any size because as long as you have enough of these tire treads, they can connect no matter how big the circle. Now the hard part about this technique is that you have to dabble with Technic pieces because these tire treads have to be connected to a gear. So if you're not Technic savvy, it's probably going to be pretty difficult. But if you do end up mastering it, a lot of people are going to be left in shock and probably trying to figure out how you achieved something because so many people aren't familiar with this. And then the final technique I have for you is one that I use quite a bit and it's utilizing these bendy tube or bendy hose pieces. The cool thing about these pieces is that they they fit in minifigure hands, so they're basically the same width or same length as wand pieces, but then you can use them in multiple different ways to create cool angles because they are bendable. In this little mock I made for you guys, you can see it in a little vine that's growing out of the ground. You can see a slight curve there, but you can also use it in bigger things like trees. I've done that before. I've also used it in a gate to represent broken wires. Because you can bend these, you can make really organic shapes, which is why they're so good for tree trunks, tree bases, tree branches, and anything that you want to make that looks natural. But those are all of the techniques and pieces that I have for you guys today. If you enjoyed, let me know down in the comments below and leave a comment if you think one of these techniques is too easy or if you think I missed something. And if there's anything else you want to see, let me know down in the comments below. But as always, thank you so much for watching and most importantly, take care.